There you are, you bastard. I've finally cornered you. I'm going to kill you now, just like you killed me, Mark hissed. You took her from me, damn it. The figure stood leaning one shoulder against the brick wall. He lit a cigarette and took a long, slow drag on his unique tobacco blend. He contorted a smile and smirked at the man he had broken so many years ago. He wondered if he should write down his standard answer, since he had given it so many times before. No, that wouldn't be interesting. He liked to rub this part of the conversation in with the supposedly alpha male. Sit down first, the figure gestured to a bench. We're not going anywhere, and then I'll explain how it's going to be. Now sit down. He grinned. Mark slowly sat down as if drawn to the bench, keeping his eyes on the man. Before the stranger began his tete-a-tete, -tete, he took another puff from his death wand. Pouting his lips, he let out a massive ring of smoke. Expanding, it stopped in midair. He raised his hand and pinched the edge of the circle. Then, with a snap of his fingers, he started a vortex, spinning the ring until the smoke disappeared. You must remember, my dear Mark, that I knew Ellen long before you met her. I first met her when she was 17 years old. Oh yes, I remember it so well. She was a very young beauty. She was the queen of the ball. But you see, she was too young for me at the time. I wasn't interested in them at that age, but she lost her virginity that night no less. I sat and waited, keeping my eyes on her. The next time I met her was at 25 in a bar. By then, she had developed into a beautiful woman, and that's when I first made a move on her. The first time I whispered in her ear, Ellen didn't know it. But I will always be there for her. You should thank me for intervening. That night, Ellen decided that she needed to find a man and start having babies, and she was done with her whoring. She had just met a group of your girls in the restroom. They were complimenting her on her beauty and hoping they would look as good as she did when they hit 30. If memory serves me correctly, that was the night you met her for the first time. Oh, I'd done my homework, you see. I knew everything there was to know about you. I knew that you seduced married women by leading them away from their husbands. You really thought you were that alpha male. You were blown away by her beauty. She owned you and you claimed her for yourself, but you didn't realize that I had already claimed her first and she would be mine forever. You didn't see that. I had already seduced her. The next time I came to her was when she had already married you and had three children, and that was when I started whispering in her ear. She resisted my suggestions. She even pulled you into her scheme to protect her from me. She needed help, and you enlisted the best doctors and surgeons to keep her safe from me. But you couldn't. I was always there for you. You were a very foolish man. You always thought you were the alpha male in her life, but no, that was me. Time went by, your three children graduated from high school. I started going full force to finally seduce her. No matter how many times you told her you loved her or how beautiful she was, she always listened to me and followed my lead. When I finally convinced her, Ellen was in her 50s and she decided to break her wedding vows. If it makes you feel any better, she lived with so much guilt afterward, and it was only once. If you remember, during that time, she became withdrawn and aloof, and when she snapped, that's when your sex life really improved. I think that's when she gave you her virginity. You can thank me later. She realized that resisting me wasn't doing her any good and wasn't helping her feel better about herself. Mark stood up, seized with rage. Ellen would never cheat on me. She loved me. I'm the alpha male. Mark, you're right, the figure said. She did love you and regretted her act until the day she died. I'm sure she wouldn't have done it if she had to do it all over again. And she would never betray your love again. And there's something you should know. She knew by then that she would never win against me. And what she did made her feel like a fool. But just so you know, she's not the first person I've seduced, and she won't be the last. I'm the best of the bunch but I find it strange that the more beautiful a woman is, the more she resists me. That's probably why I find it so difficult. An ordinary, ordinary, ordinary girl seems resigned to her fate. Yes, she loves her husband too, but she doesn't fight me. She's learned to deal with it before and is willingly going along with her fate. I hear you say you're an alpha male. 
Chuckling devilishly, he clarified, Alpha, Sigma, Gamma, or Beta, you're all the same to me. Then, grinning, he added, I want to make sure you understand, and I have no doubt that to me, you are all the same. It's spelled S-U-C-K-K. -K. Life went on and I stayed in the shadows. Do you remember the night she sat you down and said, Honey, we need to talk? The mighty Alpha swore he would never let her go. You forbade it. I remember the night she left you. You cried. You begged her to stop, and your friends held you back, saying it was for the best. You tried to bargain with God to stop her. Finally, in desperation, you swore you would hunt me down and kill me. Once again, you're such a scoundrel. Mark glared at him and said, Under heaven, someone or something may finish what I started. I'm sure there is someone you fear who will take up my cause and finish the deal for the good of mankind. Oh, someone has already tried. My partner can bend me to her will, slow me down for a moment, but I always win in the end. I've known her all my life, and she's my friend. You could say we wouldn't exist without each other. But don't forget that Ellen hated my partner as much as she hated me. Mark stood up, pulling out his gun. Good. There will be someone to mourn your death. Now look to the right. I have dug two graves, one each for you and me. Tell me your name so I can inscribe it on the headstone next to mine. The figure finished his cigarette, then exhaled the smoke into his hand and laughed heartily. You are a fool, an ignorant fool. You're not a hunter, you've always been my prey. He rose from his seat and looked intently at Mark. Mark's eyes widened with fear. The figure's eyes turned red and glared. His fangs grew long, blood dripping from them. It moved slowly toward Mark, dragging its newly formed razor-sharp claws along the brick wall, which sent sparks flying onto the sidewalk. Mark squeezed his eyes shut and shuddered with fear. My name! You want to know my name? He growled. I am the Alpha of Alphas, the supreme predator. Even if you refuse to fight, I will still win. My name is Time. I am the Lord of Death. I am the destroyer of all worlds. I am the demon wolf. Fool, you didn't come for me. I came for you.